Now it's time to hear from one of our new graduates. Please join me in welcoming our 2020 student speaker, Lisa Sheridan. Lisa is a true community builder who founded The Kiosk, the school's independent student-run newspaper. And she is a long-standing advocate for students, assuming numerous leadership roles across CUNY. Hi, everybody. I'm so honored and happy to be speaking here today. This is an amazing, weird, and historic moment. We are honoring our graduates in a way that has never been done before. Someday, hopefully sooner than later, we'll be able to gather together in person. But our accomplishments are too significant to hold off acknowledging. And in this volatile time, isn't it great to have something to celebrate? Today, the class of 2020 gets to trade in their superhero capes for this funny looking mortarboard cap. And yes, each of our graduates is a superhero. Just think about it. We have students who are nurses and healthcare workers who every day put their lives on the line. I wish I could hug each one of you in person. Thank you, superheroes. We are all indebted to you. You may not fly faster than a speeding bullet, but I'm sure you all read a chapter or two on a speeding subway. The class of 2020 boldly forged ahead, even through a pandemic. It would take more than that kryptonite virus to slow a CUNY SPS student down. So congratulations. Pat yourselves on the back and raise a glass. The class of 2020 has earned this cap and gown. Now, let's take a moment to thank the people who got us here. Our professors, the administration, and our families. A special shout out to you, Dean Magulescu. You had a prescient vision that assured our academic rigor continued seamlessly through this pandemic. The rest of the Q universe had to quickly catch up to the digital procedures you had in place from go. Thank you for your leadership and your foresight. Like many of you, my path to graduation has not been a straight line. I took the scenic route. By returning to college at CUNY SPS, I learned two of life's most basic skills, the art of self-advocating and the importance of staying curious. I came to SPS after an extended period of unemployment. I'd been working as a fashion designer for over 20 years. For a long time, I was able to advance professionally without a degree, but times changed and the job market became more competitive. Suddenly, my lack of a degree became a roadblock. It was now necessary for me to earn that piece of paper. As a single mom who needed to continue working while going to school, I knew that online school would be the only option for me. It didn't take long for me to find CUNY SPS. It was affordable and it was nationally ranked. But to my great dismay, when I applied, my application was rejected. That rejection stung like a slap. I was shocked, although I shouldn't have been. Back when I was a young college student, I transferred from art student at Hunter to fashion student at FIT. Due to some short-sighted sloppy follow-through, I never officially withdrew from those classes at Hunter and that left some nasty zeros on my transcript. Hurt my GPA pretty badly, but I wrote back to the admissions office and I asked them why my application had been rejected. They gave me a host of reasons, not just my GPA, but I was told I could appeal the decision. And thus, I was on a mission to prove my worthiness to be a student at CUNY SBS. You can just bet I did my homework too. I prepared a spreadsheet showing what my GPA would be had I officially withdrawn from those classes. 
I paid a premium to the college board to pull my old ACT and SATs from their archives. I researched to find the ratio that could translate those old scores into current day scores. My essay got a reboot. When I returned to the admissions office, I hand delivered a thick file of these documents. I will always remember the shocked look on the admissions officer's face when I hand delivered that supersized pile of papers. But my hard work paid off. The decision was reversed. I was admitted on academic probation. Now, I was determined to prove to the admissions office that their trust in me had not been misplaced. I worked hard and I made good grades. Today, I am graduating with honors. In even better news, the, the registrar's office has adopted a new policy where they look at student applications in a much more holistic manner. Now, GPA and transcripts are reviewed with the student's personal history. Thank you, Associate Dean Jennifer Grace Lee for this initiative. But what if I accepted that first no? Well, I wouldn't have been able to serve on the student government or the governing council. There wouldn't have been a team forged to launch the kiosk. And I wouldn't be standing here today. I wouldn't have met all those amazing classmates and professors. There would have been so many dreams foiled if I just didn't use that all powerful why. My tenure at SPS has been so much more than just collecting that piece of paper. At SPS, I also picked up another great college takeaway. Stay curious. In my professional life and as a mom, I was convinced that I had to have all the answers. This notion was a terrible burden to me and it stunted my curiosity. College showed me that it was okay not to have all the answers and to ask questions and, and to be open to new solutions. This realization was incredibly liberating and it helped me to start thinking in a new way. I learned to treasure downtime because it gave me the space to reflect and ponder. I began to think more deeply and creatively. 41 years after my high school graduation, I'm collecting the diploma that proves I earned my BA. As many of my friends are cashing in their 401ks and getting ready to retire, I'm starting over as a writer. Fellow students know that it is never too late. With the rapidly changing workforce, a commitment to ongoing learning is vital. We all have the agency to redefine ourselves. We all have the agency to redefine ourselves throughout our lives, and we will likely need to. I owe CUNY SPS a great debt of gratitude for showing me that learning is a lifelong process. Now, all of us who are graduating become ambassadors for CUNY SPS. So, my beloved classmates, Go forth and do great things. Stay curious, self-advocate, dream big, and never be afraid to ask why. It's the surest path to self-discovery. Godspeed, superheroes. Keep dodging the kryptonite and keep soaring. Lisa recently spoke with Melissa Hind and Margaret Detusa two other graduates who work tirelessly on the front lines as essential workers. They spoke about their experience at CUNY SPS and graduating during this unprecedented time. It means like everything to me, honestly, because during those six years that I was not in school, you know, I fell into some, I, I was still working in the field and that was my goal was to get, get, gain hands-on experience. Um, but I fell into some mental health um, 
issues and I also fell into the heroin epidemic. So I will have five years clean in December. So I always knew I had to go back to school, but it just seemed like this like daunting mountain that I had no resources to climb, no tools to climb. You know, I was, you know, in active addiction, in and out, in and out, in and out. And I never thought, you know, that this kind of life for me would be possible, that I would be thriving and, and graduating with my bachelor's and then pursuing my master's in the fall. So I am beyond excited to, to graduate and finally have my bachelor's degree. <laughs> I think it means different things. I think from the perspective of just completing this program, um, I'm just really happy that I stuck with it. There were definitely times I was close to giving up. Um, so I think that was good. But I think during the time of COVID, um, this has been really helpful to me to, again, not have my routine change. I've always been going to school online. I continue to go to school online. And a lot of the content I was learning this semester really easily, seamlessly went into my workplace. And so um, wrapping up this semester was not as hard as I expected it to be, um, even with the circumstances. So, there were times where it was scary, especially because you don't know what's what, you know, we had the news on all the time um, in the living room. It was just constantly having the news on to hear the updates from Cuomo and, and what was going on. Um, we took, we were taking precautions and my agency put certain um, new regulations in place to ensure safety of everybody. But being that I, you know, took my courses at CUNY SBS, I'm a disability studies major, I felt completely comfortable and confident going from, you know, one end of the, the spectrum to the other. So it was difficult, but, you know, I got the hang of it. I am in um, mental health or behavioral health. And so for me, um, my work has shifted to remote um, for the most part, unless I'm doing some sort of training at the hospital. But it's increased. Uh, work has definitely increased uh, twofold. I spend more time on calls and webinars and trainings than I think I had before COVID. And I think so many people are struggling um, mentally with COVID. And so knowing that we're keeping the frontline workers prepared to deal with it and um, as the state is rolling out different ways to deal with um, emotional support for frontline providers and regular folks in our community, I think it's important to, um, to stay, stay optimistic. Um, you know, we are dealing with a lot in New York State, um, but we do have resiliency and people are working really hard to support each other. So I think trying to stay positive, in the beginning, definitely there was no, no positivity, but I think as time has shifted, people are really focusing on recovery and helping people to just get better. So for my future, I, for the, for the next few years, I plan to continue working at the agency that I'm working at, um, providing customized employment supports for people who have disabilities. And I am uh, attending SUNY Buffalo online in the fall um, for my master's and I received a full scholarship from them. Yeah, that I'm really excited about and I plan to continue to provide vocational services for it's not just adults who have disabilities, it's mental illness, it's veterans, it's substance use disorder so I can help people like myself who we're kind of hopeless and give them the tools and the resources to climb that mountain and go back to school or get a job that they're really passionate about. Well, I know other people have some goals for me. Um, my colleagues are definitely wondering when I'm going to get my PhD and I'm just like, can I get my grades? But um, that's on, that's on the list of things to do. But I think right now I just want to use the things that I'm, that I've learned and, and get better at it. Um, through CUNY SPS, I've been able to be connected with some folks and have already started um, teaching um, in, in nursing. And so 
I just really want to get better at that portion of nursing and continue to just hone my skills. Thank you.